No thank you. Obviously she gets snatched up into the van, but how many of you seriously stop at random cars and use the reflection of the window to put on makeup? I would think twice about it after seeing that. This is 2019's Into the Labyrinth. Spoiler alert, while I might be giving you my opinion on the film, that's no substitute for watching it for yourself. Links to the film are in the description. After the title screen pops up, we see a woman wake up in a hospital bed, but a guard is standing outside her door. When Dr. Green comes into the room, he calls her Sam, and he reassures her that everything is okay now. He takes off the oxygen mask and he asks if she knows what happened to her. Sam isn't sure what's going on, and she tells him that it's all a game. He tries to explain that she was given very powerful psychedelic drugs, but the doctors have given her drugs to help with her memory. Once he starts some questioning, he asks where she thinks she is, and she responds by saying she's in the labyrinth. Green tries to explain that his job is to find men like the one that kidnapped her. The more Green tries to explain things, the more you can see that Sam is struggling to come to terms with reality, and she finds out that she was kidnapped 15 years ago. Well, that's a shock to the system. 15 years of being fed some psychedelic drug. She'll be lucky to get much of her old self back at all. She was kidnapped as a teenager and now she's a full grown woman. Then we shoot over to this lovely site. And now I feel like everyone has lost their minds in this world. This is Bruno and he doesn't end up pulling the trigger, but he seems to be tracking whoever is kidnapping the girls on his own. While sitting in a local cafe, he hears the news speak about Sam being held at the hospital. As he drives through town, he listens to a recording of him that says he's about to die. I couldn't tell you what's going on with that yet, we've got to watch a little more. He goes to an apartment that has a unicorn on the doorplate, and Linda answers the door to explain her time with the client. She tells him about Green working with Sam, and Bruno is confused on why they put him with her. After some more small talk, she explains that there was an anonymous tip for the police to find Sam, and this piques his interest. He decides to take a nap, and Linda snoops through his jacket pocket to find a letter from the hospital. When she asks him about it, he tells her that he has developed a heart infection that will kill him in two months. While he explains all of this to Linda, we see that he has flashbacks of taking money to find Sam, and I'm assuming that Sam is a job he took years ago but couldn't accomplish. This must be his chance at redemption before the end. Also, I guess that means that the tape he was listening to was something to get him prepared for dying. Morbid, but if it works, it works. Back in the hospital, Green tries to get Sam to go back into the labyrinth with him, and she immediately finds herself wandering down stone corridors. She explains that she isn't alone though, and she tells him about the first game she had to play. It's a cube that she finds lying on the floor next to her. When she solves the puzzle, a door opens in the labyrinth and she finds a bag of takeout food waiting for her. After seeing that she earns things for solving harder puzzles, she continues to play, but eventually the rewards stop coming. Eventually she gets thirsty and a toilet appears out of nowhere. Yep, it gets nasty now. At least I feel like there's no one really using it in this labyrinth, but they must have picked the dirtiest looking toilet to drop in there. Eventually, Sam earns rewards again and she finishes the first labyrinth. She thinks that completing the labyrinth would mean her freedom, but she never finished the fourth side. Back across town, Bruno asks around for information on Sam's case, but he finds out that the parents have long since died. The police try to brush him off as a common lowlife, but he eventually gets his way in hearing the call. When he listens to the anonymous tip, he hears a raspy voice, but when they ask about the man's details, he tells the police that he wants nothing to do with this. Bruno then leaves to check out the location he heard in the phone call, and he finds a little bar in the swamp that is filled with lowlife drunks. Soon enough, he finds the man with the voice. I want to know more about this guy. How does he form words when his mouth can't even move? He just has the box in his throat, but that doesn't dictate his words. How did he get deformed like that? He seems like a nice enough guy, but I can see why he wouldn't want to be involved with Sam's mess. If you find a girl like that in the middle of a swamp road, that's a prime way to make yourself the number one suspect. It turns out that the man has a record and that's why he didn't want to be involved. Bruno asks him if there was anyone else there with her and the man explains that there was someone in the woods as he was calling the police. It turns out that it wasn't a man, but a rabbit. When Bruno leaves the bar, he ends up seeing the same van show up for the third time, and once he's in his car, he sees police get out of the back and breach the bar. As he drives back to the town, Bruno begins to question how much of what the man said to be true. He calls an office for missing people, but when he gets no answer, he ends up going to a weird place that seems to have cases upon cases of missing people lining the walls from the floor to the ceiling. As he wanders the place, a man named Simon makes his presence known, and he welcomes Bruno to the missing persons bureau. 
They call it Limbo for short. Bruno decides to try looking for other missing children that had to do with rabbits. When Bruno asks if many people work there, Simon mentions that his only other partner has been away for quite some time. Then he finds one other case that has to do with a rabbit. It turns out that the child ended up showing back up, but after being placed in foster care, the child buried rabbits alive behind the farmhouse. Well, if that doesn't scream out psychiatrically troubled, I don't know what does. It's enough to make someone the top of your wanted list when dealing with a rabbit that kidnaps people to a drug labyrinth. This is getting weirder and weirder, and I feel like the answer is right in front of us at this point. Bruno decides to go to the farmhouse where he finds the woman that took care of the child. It turns out that the foster care she provided was for many troubled children, and she mentions Sam and Robin, who was the child that buried rabbits. Eventually, the woman tells Bruno that he should meet Bunny. She takes him to the basement and shows him a storybook that Robin brought with him. It stars a big bunny with glowing red heart-shaped eyes. We've got our suspect. To top it off, the old woman knocks out Bruno with her crutch. How do you follow an old woman like her to the basement and just turn your back on her? When he comes to, he's locked up in the basement, but he hears her speaking to someone upstairs. After the woman asks why Bruno is searching for them, she falls to the floor. Soon, footsteps can be heard coming down the stairs, but Bruno trips him and makes a break for it. After he leaves, we see the bunny man standing in the door. Back in the room with Sam, she remembers that she wasn't alone in the labyrinth. There was a door with a post-it note that is labeled 2323, and a crying woman can be heard inside. When Sam opens the door, she tries to get the girl ready to play, but the woman says that she's the game. Yup, just close that door right back. Lock it up tight, forget you ever found her. Another interesting thing is the note note that says 2323, because our phone in the room here is 23. Also, Linda's apartment number is 2 to 3. If this is just a red herring, I'll be disappointed. But either way, it's a nice trick. The woman begged her to let her go for days and weeks. Then she asked for food and water, then there was nothing but a stench coming from the room. Meanwhile, Bruno goes to the police with the information of Robin, and he tries to tell them that Robin is the kidnapper. They tell him that they don't have enough evidence, and just as Bruno starts to give up, he sees Simon and start a fight about trying to find another girl that the officers are ignoring. Bruno decides to keep searching. Bruno goes to a friend to ask about the bunny comic. He shows him the demonic images hidden in the comic and he tells him to get rid of it ASAP. When Bruno goes home, he sits in his office and records another tape to talk about his journey so far. This is where he records the tape that we heard at the beginning. That night, Bruno wakes up to a video call that shows Linda being tied up. When Bruno goes to Linda's apartment, he finds her stabbed to death in the bed and his phone sits at the foot of the bed. Eventually, he hears a cough come from the bathroom and he finds a man with a bunny mask on that is bleeding out in the tub. He tells Bruno that he did what he was told to do and he wants him to release his family. This isn't the man we're looking for. Bruno finds out that his name is Peter and he knows who the bunny is. Back in the room with Sam, Green asks if she was happy at any point in her captivity. Sam remembers a time that she was given a cat in the labyrinth, but Green questions if the cat was real. He has her unbutton her gown and she sees that there is a scar across her stomach. She now remembers that the cat was actually a baby. Maybe. How do you mix the two of them up? Usually you see people imagine it the other way around, but this is a first. Back in Linda's apartment, police have arrived and Bruno tells them that he'll only tell the name of the bunny man to Peter's wife. When they let him see her, Bruno asks her if she noticed anything strange with their gardener and after she mentions the way he looks at her family, she tells the police that the gardener has a dark birthmark right down the middle of his face. Later, Bruno tries to get more information about Robin from Simon and he finds out about a church that Robin frequents when he was younger. Once there, Bruno finds a picture of Robin with his birthmark on his face. He says goodbye to the man taking care of things and he goes to leave. Bruno goes to investigate Sebastian's room and he listens to some end of days tapes that he has recorded there. Back in Sam's room, Green convinces Sam that the only way she could have gotten pregnant is if the kidnapper came to her face to face, but Sam only remembers the dark. This is when the labyrinth goes dark and footsteps approach. Sam tells him that the man appeared to her in a hood and Green motions to men behind the mirror to cut things off. Bruno goes to visit Sebastian and he asks about Bunny. So it turns out that there is a secret title of Bunny that passes down from kidnapper to kidnappy, and it just got passed down to Robin. That's important to the story, but can we talk about the ants that are crawling around on this man's pillow? It takes no effort to wipe them off. Bruno then goes to visit Robin's childhood friend Paul, but there is no one home. 
Let's just point out the family picture of Bunny here though. That's the signature of Peter's daughter and it shows her, her sister, her mother and Bunny. Daddy? Speaking of, Bruno pulls out a picture that the girl drew him the day he visited them. As he starts to have trouble with his heart, a man pops up and starts to strangle him. Bruno gets free, but his heart doesn't let him get far. Soon he comes face to face with Paul, who bears the birthmark. Paul explains that he recognized Peter as his childhood friend Robin. Bruno finally realizes that Peter was taken to the same hospital as Sam, and he wants her back. Back in the hospital, Green gets a text on his phone, and he excuses himself from Sam's room. While Sam starts to enjoy her lunch, the phone rings and the man on the other end startles her. We quickly cut to an operating room where we see Bruno has been brought back to life. Apparently, his heart gave out for a bit back in Paul's trailer. Elsewhere in the hospital, Peter wakes up and he makes his way to Sam. This has got to be the worst hospital ever. This man literally flatlines on his monitor when he takes things off and no one comes to check on him. Then he stumbles around the hospital while leaking blood out of his stomach. Doctors literally walk right by him. When he gets to Sam's room, he finds out that they placed a decoy in Sam's bed, and Simon pops up with officers to arrest him. Soon the officers arrive and question why Simon moved without letting them know first. They tell him that Bruno died just before they arrived and they are going to hold a press conference about breaking news on Sam. When we cut back to Sam, she realizes that so much of her surroundings are fake, and she goes out into the hallway. Behind the glass, we see Simon talking to another man about her. This man is the real Dr. Green. Well, I definitely didn't see that coming. So technically, she didn't really escape after all. Even in her nightmare, she wanders a labyrinth of hospital halls. As Sam wanders, she runs into her version of Green in a room designed to simulate her being in the real world. Cityscape sounds and newspaper articles litter the room. Sam goes back to her room to wait for Green to come back, and she asks if she's done with the sessions. She asks Green all sorts of personal questions, and he starts to realize how her questioning is unorthodox. He continues to feed into her line of questioning until she asks the real questions. He explains that she's being fed psychotropic drugs and her memories are mainly a hallucination. The real Sam was found a year ago, but this Sam declares herself the winner of this round. Sam decides to change the pattern. She knocks Green with her cast as he goes to drug her and she makes her way into the labyrinth. She heads back to Green's room where she grabs the answer to the maze and she hobbles down the course. She sees Green every step of the way, but that doesn't stop her. Eventually, she comes to a ladder and she climbs her way out. When she reaches the surface, we see that she's actually Simon's missing partner. In the end, we see Green and Bruno sitting in a bar and we see that they were literally in the same bar at the beginning of this story. Then the credits roll. Okay, this was a little tricky to keep track of the timelines at times, but in the end, it ended up piecing almost everything together in a graceful and clear way. It almost felt like watching the end of Saw where they show you just how much was hiding in plain sight that ties the two storing lines together. This is definitely a thriller worth checking out. If you like thrillers with a twist, check out these recaps next. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next and I'll see you in the next video.